Well, today we're going to talk about how to not die. <laughs> not die? Yeah. How to not die. Okay. Because, um, you know, when you live in an RV, you get strong thunderstorms and tornadoes, mm -hmm. and we haven't had to deal with that a lot. No. But we are now, because we're back in Alabama, Georgia border, yeah. and uh, they get bad storms here. They do. And so that got us thinking about what to do during a storm, and we had some very recent situations. Yeah. So we'll show you all that, and then at the end we'll talk about some tips on how to not die. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're being evacuated again. Uh, at least it's not like a Branson situation where it's like middle of the night. But there's supposed to be real bad storms tomorrow, and uh, we've been calling the camp host all day because we're concerned about this tree outside of our RV. Uh, we were concerned the other night because there were storms the other night, and this thing was swaying. It's right next to the to the RV so if it goes down it's like splitting the RV right down the middle so talk to the camp host finally it's toward the end of the day I know it looks bright out here that's because the uh, the camera is a, is a low light camera but it's getting dark and we just now got done talking to the camp host about moving to a new spot we got this new spot so we're gonna hook up head out there um, for for the safety because there's supposed to be major tornadoes coming through it's gonna be like two three o'clock in the morning and um, so we don't want to get caught in that deal like another Branson situation yeah <laughs> crisis averted for now no. anyway we, we, we were trying all day we, we started at what time do we start calling well we called at lunch well we called they, yeah we called the no, office no, yeah and no answer so we thought maybe they closed for lunch so we walked over to the office and there was a sign that they were closed call the camp post if you have an issue but so we, we waited we did. We, we, and we, we watch Brazen Brits go live. And yeah. we're like, we'll call after they're live. Well, they should definitely be back from lunch. They were not. They were not. <laughs> because their answer machine didn't say that they were closed because of the virus stuff. It said that it just said closed. It yeah. didn't say what time they would reopen. And the message on the message machine just said, leave a message. We'll get back to you when we can. Yeah. So we called the camp post. And the camp post was like, we'll call the manager. We'll get back to you. Because we're like, we want to move spots. We know they have availability because they're not allowing anybody yeah, else in. Yeah, empty spots everywhere. So I was like, they said, well, we'll call you back. So we waited until dinner time. We ate dinner. Yeah. Called them back. They're like, oh, we're not able to get a hold of the manager. They're not calling us back. And I was like, well, uh, we're going to move. <laughs> and um, we'll just call the office tomorrow morning because they're like, well, just call back tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock and, and see and what they, see can, what they do can do. Well. Storms are rolling in tomorrow morning. Yeah. And that tree outside of our RV looks super sketch. Yeah. It looked like it almost went down the last storm. Yeah. And I was like, I'm, I'm just going to move and I'll just call the office and I'll let you know where we're going to be at. <laughs> and then like 10 minutes later, the manager shows up. Yeah, I go out to get things Miraculously. Ready to start loading the car. <laughs> and so he, he, he said he drove around. He'll find us a spot. He found us a spot. But the problem was, is like, now it's like getting dark. Well, it is dark now. Well, I mean, at the time, yeah. it's getting dark. So then, and then Scott wants to go to bed. And so now we're in a hurry to beat the darkness so that we can get here before the dark, or at least close to dark. So yeah, we're not setting set up, in, up the in the dark. dark. Yeah. And so we're kind of like, just like not as urgent as Branson. Yeah. But yeah, still, we went, we went rogue. We went yeah. no checklist because we're like, yep. we don't have time. We'll do it. And we only messed up one thing. Yeah. Just one little thing. And that's not on the checklist anyway. No, it's not. It was not just on one thing list. that you... The, I, I was normally stored in a closet, yeah. and I didn't store it well, in the closet. Well, normally on moving day, it's in the fridge. So it's little bars that hold the stuff in the fridge. Yeah. Normally on moving day, it's inside the fridge. But since we're just moving right down the road... I didn't think... Didn't take it out. So it got caught in the slide. Yeah, it got... Crunched it a little slide. bit. It didn't do any damage to the slide or anything. So now we're in the spot. The storms are supposed to come in tomorrow... Sometime During the day, the day, real bad tomorrow night, yeah. like late night, 2 a.m., 3 a.m. ish. And so we just decided we're going to go stay with some friends. Yeah. Yeah, and we know this, this this virus is going on, but I would take the risk of the virus before I would take the risk of these tornadoes because they're supposed to be really bad. I mean, it made world news. Yeah, and everybody is tracking it in the country, and they're saying gusts up to 80 miles per hour. But yeah. I don't want to do 80 miles per hour. Not in, this in RV. RV, and if it's I don't because have it's going to roll in. The hardest part is going to roll in between 2 to 3 a.m., and the the closest brick building to us is like a laundry and bath facility that's like a quarter mile from here. Closer to our 
po or yeah. site we just left. We would have had to yeah. get in the truck, if the sirens go off, yeah. we'd have to get in the truck at 2 a.m. with mm -hmm. Scout, drive to this building in pitch black because there's not street lights no, out here. No, they don't light up. It's, a, it's a dark campsite. So, and get to the place and not die. And not die. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to finish getting set up. It will be interesting um, when we come back after the storm to see if the tree where we were is yeah, still there or if it's down. And hopefully nothing that we're parked to right now ends up being. Yeah. And it's a pretty big spot that they're saying the storm is going to roll through. So we don't know exactly if it's going to roll right through here. Yeah. I mean, we might be moving to a house where the tornado is going to hit. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. But you don't want to be in an RV. No. Um, I'd rather so, risk it in a house than risk it in an RV. So crisis averted for now. Mm -hmm. We'll let you know if the RV survives. <laughs> we won't be here to find out firsthand. <laughs> We're getting scout security in for the ride. You struggle off film. Okay. okay. <laughs> Seems to work for us. <laughs> Well, it's tomorrow morning. It's only been a few seconds for you. Yeah. But it was all night for us. Uh, storms rolled through about 1.30, 2 o'clock-ish yeah. in the area that we're at now. We're about a half hour from the campground at, mm -hmm. our, at our friend's house. And um, it looked like it was a little stronger down south, so we'll have to see. Uh, we did the, the test, the driving test, and from our spot, doing the speed limit to, to get shelter. to the shelter was three minutes. Yeah. So I'm figuring at, at night, Dukes of Hazard style, it would have been like two, yeah, maybe a <laughs> minute and a half, two minutes. Um, but we didn't really want to do that. We wanted to be on the safe side. And, you know, if you have the resource to have a place to go, you Other should, than, you should yeah. do that um, in our situation. It would have sucked to have to, if we had to stay in it, to rock Yeah. from the wind and everything. And then just be prepared to go get to a shelter yeah. if we had to getting scout in the middle of the night, getting in the truck, mm -hmm. driving to the shelter, getting into the shelter, yeah. hanging out with a bunch of people in the shelter during the, yeah. the virus. Uh, so at least we were only with a couple other people instead yeah. of like huddling in a, a building with some, mm -hmm. some people. So, in a big house. So we're going to go back and see what the campground looks like. Yeah. We haven't looked at that yet. And um, It's crazy because the sun's shining. It's beautiful. Yeah. You would never know. Which is, I don't know if that's good or not because <laughs> we had way too much to drink last night. <laughs> no, I mean, we did. We we drank a lot, and then yeah. we. we I, I don't know. That's, that's how we cope with storms. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we were like just. We were just having a good time hanging out. Yeah, with we hadn't seen them in seven and months. And so it just so happened we stayed up late enough drinking to where we were still awake when the storms yeah. rolled through. But anyway, we're gonna go back and check out the campground. We'll take you along yeah. and let you see Fingers how crossed. everything fared. Well, you can see we're still alive and you can see that the RV is okay. Uh, there's just like debris, leaves, twigs, some branches uh, all, all over the place. You can probably hear the guys with the blowers back there blowing off all the roads. And um, right here, it's, it's a gated RV park uh, because it's military. And one of the gate arms is missing. I'm not sure if somebody drove through that or if the storm took that, but it's gone now. And it was here when we left yesterday. So... Um, when we go on our walk later, I'll take the camera with us and I'll show you uh, some of the stuff that, that, but it wasn't anything huge. And then um, we're gonna talk about some tips on what you can do to keep yourself safe if you know some bad storms are coming your way and you're staying in an RV. Oh, look at that, a branch fell right on that fence. You hate to see that. <laughs> so this is one of the ones that, that came down and you can see that this is, we, we walked over here because we thought it was initially was a whole tree but you can see that's the, the new wood, so it just came off. But this is just, this is just a branch. Just a branch of a tree. And there's some other little pieces of branches here. But this guy, man, he came off of something up there. I'm going to zoom in on it. Right there, you can still see a little fresh wood from where it broke off. So that is just zoomed in, but... You can see how high that thing fell to come crashing down right there. And so I'm going to go stand by it just to give you some perspective. This ain't no little twig. <laughs> this can be a tree by itself. This is the, this branch is the size of a tree. It is, so really. If this thing fell on your rig or you, yeah. you'd be in trouble, man. And this is the little building that they wanted us all to go to. 
all the campers in the <laughs> campground in this little building. They got the bathrooms there and then the laundry on the other side. So I'll take you inside and show you that. That's it. This would have never worked. This would have never worked unless they put us in the bathrooms. Yeah, he has access. A little space back there a little bit more space back here but um yeah uh, would have been tight in here it was planted securely over there <laughs> and fell across the street they had to drag it over there off the road so that you could get to it yeah it blocked the road so this one didn't come down on this storm last night this one came down this last storm week last yeah last thursday so we went live last thursday and we talked about the storm that almost kept us from going live mm -hmm. and this tree was a casualty of that storm that was like just a microburst storm just boom and it flew through yeah and that's the week where if you saw us on facebook or instagram you saw we were like in the bedroom huddled mm -hmm. and uh because because the, the death tree <laughs> was on the other side of our rv and we were scared <laughs> Uh, but this tree came down. That's a big boy. If, yeah. if this joker came down across your RV, Toast. cancel it. If you're in there, cancel everything. <laughs> if you're not in there, I mean, hope you got gap insurance or, <laughs> or some kind of insurance to pay pay your rig off because yeah. it's toast. It's, to, it's all done. Yep. And this used to be home <laughs> until the other day. And you can see the death tree <laughs> is still standing. Yeah. But I don't think she's got very many storms left in her. No. I think she's get, she's gonna be going down soon. You least expect it. But uh, and and we loved this this place. Yeah. Because of the wide open area and Scout used to, to run around out there and we had just a bunch of open area. And then on the other side of us over here there was hardly anybody. Yeah. There's a, sh a chalet that they they're not renting out right now. They're just open RV spots and they're not letting any new people come in. So it's just it was wide open and when we first got here you can see that class C way over there that's the first spot we came into <laughs> then we had to come over here and now we're way in the back these these ain't no little guys they <laughs> fell and they probably fell i would say about 25 30 you foot see, yeah down so i mean you can imagine it falling that far and that would yeah. uh that would hurt well we just were out hanging out and we just noticed a big branch that broke right across this way our neighbor our neighbor a big branch hanging down and so if it falls it could potentially hit his rv could i don't think it is but it could yeah so he's not home right now we'll tell him when he comes home we'll tell the camp host uh, so they can look and see yeah. but we'll show you what it looks like it it looks pretty dangerous mm -hmm. so there's the the rv across from us and up there it doesn't look big on camera until i zoom in but dangling but it's a pretty big branch that has broken off and is hanging right there. Right above his right above his RV. Or at least his spot. So he could be outside just chilling and a branch just take you out. That'd be a bad day. That would ruin your day. I would say um, for tips, if you have severe weather. Or tornadoes are coming it's not like a hurricane so hurricane you get plenty of heads up you can move yeah tornadoes and, and severe thunderstorms they just pop up out of nowhere sometimes yeah yeah we just had the one that popped up a couple days ago and then one last night mm -hmm. and so luckily we're back home so we got to go and stay with friends but if yeah. you don't have that option you need to have a plan so that's yeah. tip number one is have a plan, have a plan. Yeah. and have a backup plan have a backup to the backup if if this whole uh, deal wasn't going on in the world. We probably would have stayed in a hotel. hotel. Yeah, but um, don't feel uh, So attached to your RV that you're gonna ride out a storm that could kill you. Yeah, no, it's mm -hmm. just not smart to do mm -hmm. um, So uh, find a, sh a shelter or a plan or something um, They were gonna put us in this little bitty place and we didn't want, it, yeah. want that option Especially with what's going on right now. We'd rather be exposed to two of our friends and then than to bunch of strangers 50 in strangers in one little laundry facility and, and Probably a lot more than that when you consider the adults, and yeah. families with kids and their pets. I mean, yeah, because everybody wants to save little, their pets. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna take up a lot of space. It would have been a bad, uh, bad we wouldn't situation. Have been and like we said, it would have taken us a while to even get there, yeah. and it would have been just bad. So, so have a plan. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say, you know, download some kind of a weather alert app or have an emergency radio. We should um, have both, actually. Yeah, or you know, be sure. watching wherever you're at traveling. 
you know, tune into their local news if you have cable hookups at your RV park or get their local weather on your phone. Uh, but just keep aware of what you're doing and, and know where you are on the map. Yeah, that helps. Um, you can, you can sh see that with any map app yeah. now, but I mean, just it's important to know because when you see those warnings for the counties or the cities and then they show the severe weather and where the rotations of the storms are yeah. for potential tornadoes, you want to know where you are. <laughs> In relation, in to, relation to that, yeah. yeah, so that you know you can yeah. make an informed decision whether or not to, to get out. And then um, if you feel like you're in an unsafe situation, insist that things get changed. We yeah. felt like we were in an unsafe situation with our rig being right next to the death tree. <laughs> and we insisted that we get moved. Yeah. Uh, we didn't just call and say, hey, I'd like to move. We called and said, hey, we're moving. Uh, let us know where to go you to. You can tell or, us where or we'll just Or we'll let something. you know where we'll be. Because <laughs> we're, we're moving the rig, yeah. you know. And we, even though we didn't stay with the rig, uh, it was not an option. We're moving the rig. Yeah. And so uh, when we when we told the, the camp host that, uh, the manager came by really quickly. Yeah. And they were very accommodating. So insist. I mean, mm -hmm. this is your home. This is your, if it's not your home, if you're not full-time, it's your but, investment yeah so insist that you get to the safest possible situation um and i mean don't don't try to be superhero or brave or whatever it doesn't yeah. take much i mean and even if you're around healthy trees, trees they go they could get struck by lightning yeah they could go down and uh, you just never know what root systems look like um if it's a flood area those roots are not they come down trees come down secured in there and mm. uh these RVs are not built to take a strike from a tree. Yeah, I mean, houses right. weren't even built to take a strike from a tree. Um, you don't realize when you look at a tree how big and heavy they are. Yeah. But, I mean, it's thousands of pounds coming through your yeah. few thousand pound uh, aluminum frame <laughs> RV. Your real light. And, I mean, best case scenario, you could lose your RV. Yeah. Uh, worst case scenario, you could die. Yeah. Um, and then when a when a storm hits a tornado, or, or when a tornado or a severe storm hits an RV, it's gone. It's not gonna be pretty. I mean, there's no foundation. Yeah. There's nothing holding this thing down. There's no safe space in an RV. Yeah. There is no safe room like you would have a hallway or a under stairs. Yeah, under stairs or, yeah. or, or basement or a bathroom but, like yeah. you have in a sticks and bricks house. A safe place is out of your RV. <laughs> yeah, that is your safe. Place. <laughs> Yeah. Now there are things that you can do to help combat those those strong thunderstorms. You can put your your slides in so that your slides don't act as like wings that, that yeah. the wind can catch and Cause lift up. That, yeah. You can fill all your tanks with water. You can fill all all your fresh gray and black tanks up with water to make your rig heavier, heavier. so it's less likely to either take off or tip over. Um, we didn't put our slides in just because. Uh, now, if if it was just a, a, a strong thunderstorm, there was no threat of of tornadoes or anything like that we would probably stay in the RV yeah um, and then we might put our slides in because you put your slides in now you have a double layer of roof a little bit yeah if your slides hanging out here it, it, that, that's a really thin layer so you won't yeah. you don't want anything hitting hitting that yeah. and, and so we probably would put our slides in if it got pretty bad and we stayed mm -hmm. in the RV but we don't want and we were staying at friends last night so we didn't want to leave the RV put the slides in it kind of tells everybody you're not you're home not there yeah you know so we didn't want and we were we left way before the storm, so there was several hours by the t from the time we left to the time the storm hit. Mm -hmm. So it would have been uh, basically an announcement that we're not home. Yeah. And um, not that anybody would come and rob you would us. Hope not. But I mean, you take away as many opportunities as you can. Yeah. So we we took the risk on that. Left our slides out. Uh, we didn't fill the thing up up with water or anything like that. No. Um, but you can do that, and mm -hmm. it it will weigh. It will add several hundred pounds to your to your weight of your RV uh, with just all the water. Water weighs eight pounds uh, per gallon, so it doesn't yeah. take much to add, add a bunch of weight to, yeah. your, to your stuff. So that's basically it for the tips. Uh, yeah. We are gonna do something a little bit different today. Oh yeah? On our um, honoring a fallen oh, hero. Yes. We had a, uh, well, we wanna highlight an organization and honor a hero. Yeah. Um, we are members of the Combat Veterans Motorcycle Association. Mm -hmm. We used to ride motorcycles every day of our lives <laughs> before, uh, but I had some I had some issues with some uh, injuries, uh, so unable to ride. Hopefully, we'll be able to ride again sometime. We're still members of the Combat Vets Motorcycle Association because we're life members. Yeah, and we do hope to ride again sometime. Um, uh, while we were here, 
uh, close to home is our home chapter, the chapter that, that we stood up, we helped stand up. Mm -hmm. And uh, so our sister chapter, which is in Alabama. Just on the other side of the river. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. so we did a lot of charity work with them. And so they lost a member uh, this past week uh, named Tom Ray, retired command sergeant major, Vietnam veteran, two tours in Vietnam, uh, paratrooper for the 82nd Airborne, did 29 years military yeah, it's service. Crazy. And then it's a long time. 16 years as a Department of Defense contractor. And just a ton of charity. I mean, the guy was all over the place. Yeah. Helping people. Yeah, uh, he was. Volunteer with hospice. That and was it, that was his baby. The, yeah. the Columbus Hospice was his baby. Um, he loves that place. Houses for Heroes. Yeah. Helping Hands. Um, and so he, he, he focused a lot on, on, Very on vet hospice members that were also veterans. Yeah. Uh, and while we were here and lived here, we, we helped out with a lot of those. So we got to know Tom very well that way. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, he passed away this week and during this time, you know, yeah. no large groups can gather. So um, can't have a proper um, service. Yeah, can't have a proper service. Right now. Because uh, he's, he's one that qualifies for full honors. Yeah. And um, so they were uh, our brothers and sisters from the Combat Vets Motorcycle Association. Um, they they help help veterans all over the place, mm -hmm. countrywide organization, chapters in every state. Um, but when they're not helping vets, and, and especially when they have a brother or sister go down, um, they escort them and they take them on their final ride, which they did today uh, for Tom. So we uh, we weren't able to go. We don't have bikes. Uh, and yeah. we, social distancing, so we parked across from the from the, the cemetery. Of the cemetery. And we uh, stood by our truck and rendered our our hand salute to say goodbye to Tom. And so we wanted to honor Tom today. And it's, it's a little tough because uh, I mean you, you you don't feel like you you got to say goodbye properly. Um, we've never uh, done this for another no, it's a first fallen hero that didn't. Uh, that we that we didn't lose in combat, we just lost him. So um, we will fade out and go and 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 honor Tom. Yes. So stick around and help us honor this hero. We um, appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.